Revolution Golfers, Martin Chuck here. And you know, the great Ben Hogan did not have some of this technology that I have to use today with the, you know, four cameras, view in the studio, and then of course Gears Golf here to, you know, help, help him get his golf swing organized. He dug it out of the dirt. You know, he was one of the great researchers back before people really did a lot of research. You know, he struggled mightily hooking the golf ball, and then he kind of sorted it out after years. You know, he really didn't become an established tour player until he was 35 years old or thereabouts. So an exceptional player. You know, he wrote a couple of books. This is my favorite, The Five Lessons of Modern, Modern Fundamentals of Golf. And the Revolution Golf Coach Jim McLean has got a special project about Ben Hogan I'm really excited about. But there's so much to learn in this book. It's a great book. There's some things I think in here that, you know, you might want to avoid, frankly. But there's a lot of amazing nuggets. Way, way, way more great stuff than casual things and, and cautious things to be weary of. Um, you know, most notably, I love how he devotes this chapter on the grip. Like chapter one starts off with a grip, and you can see, you know, this is the engine of the golf swing. Can you get your hands on effectively? And I want to share some of the stuff today about the grip, you know, and some of these amazing Anthony Ravielli drawings about how Mr. Hogan carefully put his hands on the club. Because I'll tell you what, everybody thinks they grip it nicely, but I'm going to tell you, eight out of ten people that come see me at the golf school, They've got something wrong with their grip that keeps them from playing their best golf. And you are one of them out there. I guarantee you, I'm talking to 80% of you right now. So let's really pay attention to this tip. Pick up these little teeny nuances and you're going to strike golf shots better because you're going to have more effective control of the golf club. Revolution Golfers, we're talking about the grip of the fabulous Ben Hogan, the best tournament ball striker bar none. Now, when we talk about the grip, okay, and as it's illustrated in his wonderful book in chapter one, he takes a lot of great care to show a few things to people, and I want to go over those. At the golf school, we call it the hook in the heel, meaning that we're going to hook the index finger of the lead hand, in my case, my left hand, and then we're going to take the heel pad. If you run your finger down your thumb to the end of your hand right there, that's the heel pad. And if you can do this properly, Mr. Hogan shows that he can pick up a golf club no problem in this condition right here. So that really illustrates how the heel pad goes on top of the grip. Now people always say, hey Martin, is it two fing is it two knuckles? Is it three knuckles? How do you know how much to turn your lead hand on the grip? Well, I always coach it this way, and I hope this is uh, clear for you. I want my wrist to be vertical. In other words, there's a karate chop. I want that lead wrist to always be vertical. I don't want to fashion my hand on there somehow where you can see the logo on my glove. I want the logo on my glove, in essence, to be pointing a little bit skyward, but primarily at the target. And if it's skyward, guess what? I have a nice little bend back in my wrist, a little cuppy wrist condition. Why cuppy at address? Because the dynamics of the swing will flatten it for impact to you where you can have that nice forward lean condition. So heel pad on top and a nice short left thumb, a short lead thumb. Go ahead and drag that thumb so you close the gap on the side of your hand to your thumb. Now the right hand, really, really important, and Mr. Hogan's was as beautiful as any. Arnold Palmer was a great grip too, and I love looking at how they put their hands in the club. Now whether you 10 finger it, interlock it, overlap, doesn't matter. But I'm gonna say one thing. You overlappers, if you were taught to go webbing to, or I'm sorry, you interlockers, if you were taught to go webbing to webbing, there's a good chance that you can't get your right hand on properly. You can't get the club in the fingers like Mr. Hogan illustrates in chapter one of his book. If you go, and try this at home, if you go webbing to webbing, you're going to feel like you have to put the club too much in the palm of your trail hand. So let's be very mindful that an interlock grip is really just mid-finger to mid-finger, and that will allow you to get the grip primarily in the fingers, so that the lifeline of your trail hand can fold nicely onto that lead thumb of yours. And don't be afraid of having a little bit of trigger finger there. What I'm saying is, you can see the grip through there between my middle finger and my index finger, that's trigger finger. That'll help you have a little bit more control of that golf club because when it swings to the top, we want that club to bench to seat on that base knuckle of the right index finger. You don't need a right thumb to play golf. If the grip's on properly and you go to the top, that club's gonna, it's gonna rest on that knuckle. If it's flopping around in the, you know, between your thumb and hand, you're gonna have a hard time controlling that golf club. So 
get that hook and heel. Let's get that short thumb, that left thumb on the top right quadrant. When you do that, it really doesn't matter if you want to go 10 finger interlock, interlock or overlap. And when we get our right hand on nicely, and believe me, this takes practice, you guys and gals out there. Don't short change yourself on taking time to build a correct grip. And when you do that, you can hit some lovely shots. You'll control the golf club and you'll be able to get in that awesome impact condition. So this is Martin Chuck signing off from the Raven Golf Club Phoenix. Please post your questions and comments down below. Thanks for watching.